Hi there, I'm Dark Shade and I'm broadcasting from a different location and so I thought I would update you a little bit about your credit score. You may or may not know this, but a lot of people don't know what affects their credit score. So I thought I would share a little bit of information that I know. So basically, so when you um, go online and you decide that you're going to apply for a line of credit, it could be for a phone, it could be for a credit card, it could be for a loan, it could be for anything like that. Those, anything that you apply for is seen as an actual application and it is seen as a borrowing. So you would then um, be, well, they more or less calculate that you are planning to borrow that amount of money and depending on how much they deem that you have left, left based on your Experian report or one of the credit card bureaus, they're going to determine whether or not you can afford it. Now, if they think that you can't afford it and you've been applying for lines of credit, it's going to affect your credit score. So that's the first thing. So some people, they don't realise that when they take out a phone, that they are actually applying for a line of credit. It's actually a loan. You're agreeing to pay a certain amount of month, unless you're on pay as you go, and you know, SIM only. You're agreeing to pay a certain amount a month, and, but for a period of time, one year, two years, three years. That is seen as a loan. Similarly, with a credit card, whether you've used it or not, depending on what the limit is on the credit card, that will be deemed a loan because you are asking for a credit card, you are asking for a line of credit, and that's going to affect your, your, um, your report, your level, your, your credit rating. And that's how it works. Anything you apply for as a loan, as, um, like I said, a phone, or a credit card, anything, or even a store card, you know, like next store cards, Argos store cards, um, what else are there? Boohoo store cards. You've got lots of different store cards. They all um, contribute to whether or not your life, your credit is high or low, good or bad. So the thing is, is that you have to know that when you apply for anything. Because you might think to yourself, why am I being rejected? I haven't even bought anything. And the thing is, whether or not you activate those applications or not, they still, they still um, go against your, your credit score. And some of them, if you don't take it out and they've waited about three months, it will be temporary. And then they'll adjust it if you haven't taken the loan out. But for the time, for the time that you've made the application, until the time they realise that you're not taking advantage of the application, that constitutes a low, a low credit score. Now, some people, they don't even go as far as that credit score. If you go to the bank and you ask for a loan, they're going to say to you, um, how much have you got coming in? You might say, I've got 1,500. Okay, they'll say, how much is your rent or your mortgage? You'll say 900 pounds. So then they'll say, how much is your electricity bill? You'll say it's roughly about 150. So that's already 1,050. So then they'll say, um, so um, water rates, council tax, um, what other mandatory obligations do you have? And you might say, well, I've got my phone, which is 50 pounds a month. I've got my um, council tax. You don't even have to tell them that because they'll just deduct it anyway and I might have a credit card or whatever. Anyway, supposing you've only got a hundred pound left, they're going to deem you not suitable for a, a loan. You might think, oh, I can manage off of a hundred pounds a month. A hundred pounds, I only need 25 pounds a month for food. They don't look at it like that. They look at it on emergencies, they look at it on um, holidays, even if you're not going on holiday, they look at it on um, clothes and food and essentials. So that £100 ain't going to take you nowhere. So that is where you are when you, um, that is how they calculate it. Now, supposing you're marginal, supposing 
um, you, your, your income is 1,000, but all your expenses are just 1,000 pounds then they'll probably say, okay, um, it is likely that we can borrow, we can lend you um, whatever your loan is. Uh, but then at that point, then they'll go and check one of the three credit bureaus like Experian or one of those. Let me just turn this off so it doesn't go off. So, um, yeah, sorry about this. Yeah, I just forget that. You know, there's so much things to remember. I'll just do notifications. Okay, so, so that is the main reason why you might have a low credit score. Once you have a low credit score, it's very, very difficult to get any form of loan. And like I said, even a phone. You might think, oh, it's just a phone. I can afford £10 a month. That's not the point. You've already got a low credit score that's working against you. What else can work against you if you've missed a payment? Even one payment. If you've missed one payment, that's going to go against you and it's going to lower your credit score. They're also going to, um, and if, say for example, you've missed a payment and it's only a couple of days, it might give you a little leeway. If it's 30 days, big no-no. Um, 60 days, even a bigger no-no, and 90 days, a definite no-no. So, so you've not only got whether or not your, your history shows that you've um, been paying regularly, but also the right amount and not just minimal amounts. So it is, it's not, it's not um, straightforward, it's not as straightforward as you think. Um, sometimes when you have, um, oh, let me just go back to this. Yeah, sometimes you'll be paying off your credit card and you're thinking to yourself, I can't bloody pay it off every time I put on a hundred pounds. It's not going down. It's not going down. And the sad thing about that is if, if you've got a low credit score, ordinarily, you should be able to do a bank balance transfer and take that, take whatever it is, 2,000, 3,000, and put it on a no interest um, account. And so say no interest account for say two to three years. You pay a 3% upfront, but at least when you pay a hundred pound on, you actually see your amount going down. But if you've got a low line of credit or a low credit score, you won't be able to do that because they again see that as a loan. Even though you're doing a bank, a bank transfer, they still see that as a credit application. So these kind of things affect your credit score and it affects whether or not you can get a line of credit. Also, if you haven't put your name on the um, voting register, that will give you a lower credit score. So there are quite a lot of stuff that you wouldn't even think that would affect your credit scores, but they do. Take out a laptop, take out a phone, all going to affect you. Applying for credit too often, missing payments like I said, it would default to be recorded on the report. Also borrowing more than you can afford. And that's why they do that um, that calculation I spoke about when you go to the bank to see how much you've got coming in and to see how much you've got going out. Some people really stretch it thin. Some people are quite good. Some people can budget. But the bank ain't interested in you budgeting. They don't care whether or not you can live off of £25 a week. They want to work out what is reasonable for them. Um, so if you've of course, if you've got a debt relief order, county court judgment, bankruptcy, in individual voluntary agreement, those are the ones where you decide that you can't afford what, you're, what you owe, and so you arrange to give £5 a month or £10 a month or £50 a month. All of those affect your credit score. You might think, well, at least I'm paying off something, and at least I'm, you know, I'm doing what I can but it will affect your credit score. 
And like I said, lenders have their own way of calculating your credit score. And like I said, that could be um, how much you're coming in and how much is going out, but it could also be something else. Um, so they look for, if you are looking for um, loans or credit cards, use the website so it says, check your availability without affecting your score. That's really important. Also, see if you can get an Experian report. They're free. The first one is free. Yes, they'll try and encourage you to sign up for regular ones and you pay a fee, but you only need one to see where you are, to see how you stand, to see, and you'll be surprised. What they say is, it's not good to pay off things too quick and too soon because you need a long credit history. So you might think, okay, I, like I've done before, I've paid off a card and I've closed it. Or I've paid off an account or a mortgage and I've closed it. And because I've closed it, they can't see that in my history. So it's best to keep things open. It's also not good, like I've got a habit, if I borrow something, I try and pay it all off as soon as I can. That's not good because what creditors want to see is that you can pay a certain amount on a regular basis. <coughs> Seems like a bit of cough every time I do a video. They want to see that you can actually pay on a regular, consistent basis over a period of years. They're not interested in whether or not you can pay it off in a lump sum, like you, if you want some money and you pay it off. That doesn't mean anything to them because as far as they're concerned, they're not sure what, how you manage money. So they need to know that you can pay methodically. Now what I did after I realized this, I bought something on my credit card and I started, um, I st set up a standing order. Another thing that works in your favor is direct debits. A lot of people don't like direct debits. They want to be able to control their income. They, want, they don't want some, you know, electricity companies taking out large amounts when they're not expecting it and all these other companies. They don't like that. So they don't set up direct debits, maybe for mortgage, maybe for council tax, or maybe for the telephone. But by and large, they don't set up um, direct debits for anything else. But direct debits helps to increase or improve your credit score um, because they know that that money is coming out on a regular basis. And like I said, it's very important that you do pay on a regular basis, even if it's £10. You pay it on a regular basis over a period of months or up to a year so that they can see, okay, this person is consistent, is stable. But if you um, take out something, if you, like when I, um, when I paid off my mortgage at one point, I, I, I paid it all off at once. It didn't prove anything to them. Then I took out another mortgage and now I'm kind of paying it bit by bit by bit by bit because that shows them that I am a stable individual and I can pay my bills on time. That's what they want to see in order to improve your credit score. But I tell you something, if I won the lottery, I would pay off my mortgage. I really would. Um, what else? Only borrow what you can afford, credit cards are borrowing, set up direct debits, pay off credit, register to vote, check credit report. So I've said all of that. Also, you know, you get some of these um, credit cards that, that kind of say very, very quickly, oh, you know, fantastic credit card. And then in little small writing at the bottom, check on your, on your TV screen, APR variable. Sometimes it's as much as 60%. You don't want anything like that. Because what that means is it can go up to 60% at some point and you'll be paying interest up to 60%. So make sure that the APR is low, 2.5%, whatever it is. But you know, once you start seeing over 10%, you've got to be really careful. And you also have to look at that little writing. When those credit cards come up, don't think, oh, great, what a fantastic credit card. Look at that writing that's very, very up the bottom, and sometimes it doesn't even give you a chance to read it. What I sometimes do is, when I see the advert come on, 
I get my phone out, I take a picture of my television screen and I snapshot it because then I can always enlarge it and I can look at it. But, you know, it's designed literally to attract you in. And some of those ones that um, offer, you know, the ones that say, oh, even if you've got bad credit, um, you can get a loan. The interest on those cards will kill you. So don't even think about it. It's not worth it. You'll end up in more debt than you ever realised. Um, what else? So what you're trying to do now is paying, well, just pay a little above the minimum over a consistent period and over maybe one or two years, even if you can afford more. If your minimum payment is £10, pay 15 for a prolonged period of time. That will show that you're not. That will show that you are actually accounting for the interest, and you're paying a bit on the principal. Um, I've already said that your credit utilization ratio is the amount you owe on your credit card relative to your credit limit. So, if you're, if you got a credit card for, say, about five thousand, and you've used four thousand five hundred of it your credit utilization ratio is quite high. So a decrease in your credit limit would increase your utilization ratio. Thus you could, your score could go down. So I think um, I've given you a rough um, idea about credit cards and you know what to do to improve your credit scoring. And hopefully you'll find this helpful. That's all for now. Bye-bye.